release the teenagers and the children. <laughs> he says, I'm Joshua's. Uh, he's maybe six, but going on. <laughs> 18 or something like that. <laughs> Oh, good. You want to give me a hug? Oh, you want to give me a hug? Mm. Okay, everything's buttoned up. He likes me to have my coat buttoned, and if it's not buttoned, he buttons it up. Okay. <laughs> You're a ham. All right. <laughs> Let's stand to our feet. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's hold our Bibles up <laughs> and uh, let's say this together. Internet congregation, say this with us. Heavenly Father, thank you for the Bible. I believe the Bible. It's your word. It's the truth. It's a love letter from you to me. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated and turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. I thought we would go start in Genesis 1 tonight and go through Revelation 22. So just relax, you know, we'll be here. No, I'm just kidding. But we are starting in, in Genesis 1. And the first verse we want to read is verse uh, 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. The first part of that verse. Then God said, let us make man in our our image according to our likeness. So we are made in the image of God. Notice that God used a plural uh, uh, term there. He said, let us make God in our image. And so you see the uh, doctrine of the Trinity right there in the first chapter of the Bible in Genesis. As a matter of fact, if we were to go to the first verse in the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth Interestingly, right here you have the doctrine of the Trinity but because the word for God there is Elohim, which is a pluralistic name for God, but it's coupled with a singular verb. Isn't that interesting? And Elohim, a, a plural name for God, coupled with a singular verb, and Elohim created the heavens and the earth. So uh, we believe in one God, eternally existent in three persons, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? And But notice he said, and, and he created us in his image. So God is a triune being, and we're going to see from this teaching tonight on the spirit, soul, and body that we are also triune beings. So let's turn now to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and, and see this. Uh, in uh, one of Paul's letters, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see there that uh, here the word of God identifies us as being a triune being, we have a spirit, a soul, and a body. That's three parts. Now, the, the inner man is comprised of the spirit and the soul. The spirit and the soul always uh, travel together. They can be defined separately, but they cannot be separated positionally. And, uh, but the, the inner man can be separated from the body. At, at death, the the inner man, the spirit and soul, depart immediately to be with the Lord. But then uh, later on, our bodies are resurrected. We're given new res That's a seed that's planted, that old body. And when the Lord comes back, he raises up th from that seed a new uh, uh, glorified body. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So uh, our spirit and soul, after we... You know, we die, we just change addresses. The inner man or inner woman departs. But then uh, that inner person is rejoined with a resurrected, glorified body on the day of resurrection. Now, of course, there we could be the generation 
that are alive at the coming of the Lord. And if that happens, we'll just spirit, soul, and body be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. The way things are, you know, he could come at any time. We believe in the imminent return of Jesus. So the teaching tonight is on the spirit, soul, and body. Um, I like to compare the spirit, soul, and body to a lake. Is one way the Holy Spirit gave it to me that makes it easy to understand. And so if you have a lake, you have the water and then you have the shoreline. The shoreline which contains the lake, I would compare to our physical bodies. And the lake would be the inner man. Uh, the part of the lake close to the surface, we would compare to the soul, which is also uh, referred to as the seat of emotions by many seat of our emotions by many Bible scholars and the spirit or heart would be the deepest part of that lake the the deepest part of the inner man and you see this you know I certainly I'm not a proponent of secular modern day uh, psychiatry but at least psychiatrists do recommend do rec recognize that there's something deeper than the conscious mind they call it the subconscious uh, subconscious mind is what they call it. But what a psychiatrist would refer to as the subconscious, really what they know there's something deeper than that conscious mind, and really what they're talking about is the heart or the spirit of man. And so uh, we believe, according to the scriptures, that we are a triune being made of the, uh, the, the inner man being the spirit and the soul, and then we also have a physical body. So the, the, the water would be the inner man, the surface being the uh, area, being the soul, and the deep part of it being our heart or spirit. That's the deepest part of us. Amen. And he says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you. That means uh, we, that we're set apart. Now we're set apart for salvation. You know, when we accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, we belong to him. And we're set apart. And that means our spirit, soul, and body belongs to the Lord at that time. Not just our spirit and soul, but our body belongs to Him. Notice that it doesn't, sometimes people leave that part out. But we need to understand that it's not just the inner man, the outer man belongs to the Lord too. It's been sanctified according to this verse. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this helps us when we think of physical healing. You know, not only are, have we been a saved, born again, received a, you know, a new creation, but also uh, our bodies have been set apart for God. Yes, no, they haven't been glorified yet, but they're still set apart for God. And when we're fighting sickness, one thing we need to do is one way we can pray say, Lord, my body's been set apart for you. It belongs to you. It doesn't belong to whatever disease might be trying to attack us. Now, we know that we live on a fallen planet. We're, we're saved. We belong to the Lord. We're sanctified. But we, uh, we do live on a fallen planet. Even though we're not of the world, we are in the world. And there are sicknesses and diseases and things like that that do try to attack. But greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Amen. <laughs> And we have a blood-bought right to believe God for the health of not only the spirit and soul, but also for our physical bodies as well. And again, um, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Amen. <laughs> He will do it. Glory to God. And then notice this last verse, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. It's all about His grace. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, the unmerited favor that we have through Jesus Christ and the, His death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. He will do it. We just, when, whatever we're fighting, we need to release ourselves to the Lord and call on Him. Praise the Lord. We can't heal ourselves, but we can call on the healer who can heal any disease. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Praise the Lord, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies uh, your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Notice, and may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that peace is an important word when it comes to sanctification. We need peace. We need peace in our nervous system, in our physical body, in our minds, our conscious area. We need uh, peace in the inner man, well, in the soul, the, the, that, the, we, in the, the uh, deepest part of us, the spirit of man. We need peace through and through. Do you know that many medical problems are related to stress? I read one report by, it was done by, uh, at Harvard that uh, over 60% of doctors' visits are stress-related. And it's getting back to that illustration of the lake. You know, uh, the inner part of us being the water, the spirit and soul. But when that, those emotions, for example, get agitated... Uh, in a body of water and waves begin to develop and beat against that shoreline, what happens to the shoreline? It begins to experience erosion and begins to have problems. And the same thing happens with us. If we let that our soulish area <coughs> get all disturbed and uh, let those waves of anguish and worry and fear and stress beat against the shoreline of our bodies, it begins to break us down and we can have all kinds of health issues if we allow that to happen. So we need to keep our eyes on the Prince of Peace. Praise the Lord. Amen. He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee or on the Lord. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So we need to keep our minds on the Prince of Peace and not let the devil stir up our emotions and get us all agitated because that not only affects us mentally, it can affect us uh, physically as well. We've been set apart by the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. By the God of Peace Himself. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, let me show you this in another place in 3 John. 3 John 2, where you'll see this connection. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, what? Just as your soul prospers. In other words, when you've got that calm lake surface, you know, when your soul is prospering and you've got that manifestation of peace, and the waves are not beating against the shoreline of your, uh, of your body or your physical health, uh, then you're going to prosper in all things and be in health. So this helps us to be in health. Now I remember years ago, just to give an illustration, uh, there, a man called me who had been healed at a meeting I had ministered at in another state. It was at a state uh, advance for full gospel businessmen. And he had, his back had been healed. And he called me up 10 years later. And he said, you know, I haven't had any back problems for uh, 10 years. And I, we gave God all the glory. We give Jesus all the glory. I just happened to, be, you know, be there. But he said in that meeting, he said, God healed my back. And it's been healed for 10 years. But here lately, my back, I've gotten in back pain again. Severe back pain. And I've had to go back on pain meds. And I just thought I'd call you and ask you to pray for me again. And so I was talking to him on the phone, just began to visit with him for a while first. And he began to share with me how uh, anger had come back. And he had let a lot of anger come back into his life. He said he found himself just finding fault with his family, with his wife, and just getting angry at everybody. And uh, I said, well, you know, I believe this is... And then I remembered from ministering to him those 10 years before it began to come back to me that he had had to... Uh, a real uh, issue there with anger. And so uh, I ministered to him uh, in that uh, area 
Well, you can go to Ephesians chapter 4 and just show, show you that in the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning in verse 26. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. And so uh, we need to be careful uh, not to give place to the devil. Now, everybody experiences the emotion of anger. All of us have, have experienced it, but the, the scriptures warn us, don't let it sink in and reside and get deep down you know, into, your, uh, into your spirit. It's going to really cause some uh, turmoil. Uh, in your lake if you do that. You need to, uh, to take that to the cross of Christ and release it to him. And so I just, he began to share with me how this anger had just been rising up. And I said, well, you know, before I pray for your back, uh, let's just take this to the cross. And I said, you know, uh, let's just pray. And he, he repented for having let that anger come in and, 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 and nestle in and reside in instead of dealing with it. And he just took it to the cross by confessing it and repenting it to God. And do you know while he was doing that, his back, back pain left? <laughs> I mean, I prayed for his healing, but it really left when he took that anger to the cross. And he was uh, totally healed. Uh, he wrote me a letter about three months later, and I have it back there in the file somewhere. I, I'm not going to tell you his name for confidentiality reasons, but... But he wrote me a letter about three months later and said he, he hadn't had any back pain since we, his visit on the phone, since he had taken that anger to the cross of Christ through confession uh, and repentance. And he had stayed healed those three months and he believed, you know, he knew what was causing it. And so we need to understand this. You know, we need to not let the enemy come in and agitate us. You know, demons try to agitate. They try, most of the warfare most of the time is right here in, in the soulish area, really right between the, the ears up here. He tries to come in with a wrong kind of thoughts and just try to get us all stirred up. And that affects us, uh, the, the whole person. And we need to deal with it then, not let it sink into the bottom of that lake, you know, and nestle in there where it gets a stronghold. If we don't deal with it while it's on the surface, what will happen is, It'll sink to the bottom of that lake and it can rise up at any time and cause all kinds of, of problems. Come on now, don't shout me down because I'm preaching the truth to you tonight. Amen. So, you, you know, uh, let me go with me to 2 Kings chapter 6. I thought we might go here tonight. 2 Kings chapter 6 beginning in verse 1. And the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, See now the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. <clears throat> Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there. And let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, Go. <clears throat> then he said, Please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them and when they came to the Jordan they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it in there, and he made the iron float. Therefore he said, Pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand, and he took it. Amen. Now that was a miracle, right? For iron to float to the surface of the water. But there's a lesson here. I believe that stick that he threw in there represents the works of Jesus Christ on the cross, the wooden cross at Calvary. And he threw that stick into that water. And when we bring through repentance and through surrender and confession and being wearing the belt of truth into the throne room of grace, that causes those heavy things to float to the surface. The things that don't belong in the inner man or the inner woman. The things that have sunk down into the depths of our heart, into the spirit. Uh, for example, uh, things like uh, fear, uh, unrepentant sin, bitterness, and so forth. These are heavy things. But the good news is this, they don't belong to us. 
They are boring. <laughs> you know, they don't belong to us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, so, you know, when we take it to the cross of Christ and when we pray and ask God to show us these things, then he, he takes that ladle, he causes those heavy things that don't belong to us anyway and causes them to float to the surface of the inner man and he just takes the ladle of the Holy Spirit and dips them out and throws them away <laughs> into the sea of forgetfulness. That's why we need to spend time with God in prayer. And sometimes we don't even know what's bothering us. You know, there's something might be bothering us inside. We don't really know what it is. We need to get before the Lord in prayer and He'll reveal things to us and show us what we need to let Him take out of the depths of our inner being, the, the depths of our hearts. Amen. He can show us things. We need to uh, turn with me to... Proverbs uh, chapter, let's go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. The spirit of the man, uh, the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. So the spirit of man is is the lamp of the Lord searching all the inner depths of his heart. So, the lamp of the Lord. So, we need to get in the Spirit, get in God's presence, and then he'll light that lamp of the inner man, and he'll show us, wait a minute, here's an iron axe head here that doesn't, it's bored, it doesn't belong to you. <laughs> get it out of there, you know. If we just get in his presence, that's why we need to spend time praying, we need to spend time worshiping God, praying uh, with the understanding, praying with the Spirit. Amen. And if you don't have a prayer language, ask God to give you one. There's a real blessing to pray uh, in the Spirit. Amen. And just let, let the Holy Spirit light up the lamp of the inner man. And uh, He shows us things that uh, we need to deal with and just release to Him. It's really, once He shows it to us, it's just a matter of letting him have, letting him t take it out of there, you know. Uh, we don't have to let it reside. We can even say in the name of Jesus, fear leave. It might be a fear of something that is there that we're sensitive to and didn't realize. And he shows that to us. He said, we just say in the name of Jesus, I cast this thing out. I don't want it uh, in, in my, the lake of my being anymore in Jesus' name. It's not going to stay in my inner man anymore. Maybe it's some hurt that happened a long time ago that's been forgotten about by the conscious, the, the, the soulish part of us, been forgotten about, but it's nestled down in the depths of our inner man, and it's been affecting us in ways we didn't even realize, and we get it before the Holy Spirit, and He lights up that lamp of the inner man and shows that uh, iron axe head down there, you know, and, it, and we said, well, this, this has got to go. I, I, I realize I've been letting this hurt uh, affect my life and my actions. And we just take it to the Lord and He heals the brokenhearted. The anointing of the Holy Spirit will heal the brokenhearted. And uh, that hurt will be gone. And it won't be uh, causing wrong action and uh, wrong things to happen in our lives anymore. Wrong, wrong reactions to things and so forth because uh, the Holy Spirit showed it to us and we'd realize that doesn't belong to me. Now I realize when this happened, it doesn't belong to me. Uh-uh. I'm going to let the ladle of the Holy Spirit take this away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You getting something out of this? And you know, we need to renew the mind with the Word of God, talking about the soulish area of that lake, the surface area. You know, it's important to not only let the Word of God sink down into our hearts, but we need to renew the mind with the Word of God. Turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Whenever you're reading the Word of God, I'm telling you that's benefiting you, whether you realize it at the time or not. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, uh, let's start in verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 
This is reasonable. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to renew that soulish area with the Word of God. God's Word gives advice that's just exactly the opposite of what the world gives many times. You know, the, the world uh, preaches vengeance, and God's Word preaches forgiveness. You know, and uh, the, the, the world says, uh, get all you can, can all you get, and guard the can. That's what the world says. But God's Word says, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, shaken together and running over for what measure you give it will be measured back to you amen. amen praise god so we need to renew the mind with the word of god but then also we need to understand that every time we read the word of god not only is the mind being renewed but that word is also going down into the deepest part of that lake it's like dredging that lake too it's not it's going down in there it's working all through bringing life all throughout the the the, the depths of our spirit and it's, it's searching for anything that shouldn't be there to, to, to you, you know, the, the Word of God itself is spirit and life. Jesus said in John 6, 63, if you want to put that up there, Pam, in 663, he said, he talked about the words that he was speaking. He said, they are spirit and they are life. Spirit and life. So every time we're reading the Word of God, not only is our, are our minds being renewed, but our hearts are receiving more of His Spirit and more of His life. Amen. <laughs> glory, to, glory to God. You know, I like to put the Bible on. Uh, I've mentioned this many times, but I've just developed as a, a, a good habit. I ex I've got a little exercise room at the house with a stationary bicycle and a treadmill and some dumbbells. And when I'm on that treadmill or on that stationary bicycle, I'll put the Bible many times. I put the Bible up there on DVD, and it puts the words on the screen, and this uh, guy with a nice baritone voice, he reads the Word of God off. And sometimes I'm going along, and my mind may be somewhere else, and I'm wondering, is this doing any good, the, the, the Bible running on a DVD? And... I'm not even, my mind may wander, and I'm not even paying attention to it. And, you know, I'll be somewhere else later on, and uh, I'll be in a situation, and what I heard when I didn't even think I was listening will come bubbling up out of the depths of that lake <laughs> to the surface to help me in some area of my life. It's always, even if you play it while you're asleep, and I've done that before, uh, uh, Shara doesn't like a lot of noise while we sleep and so I have to put those little bugs in my ears which are kind of uncomfortable so I don't do that as much as I do the thing on the, the exercise bike but even if you're sleeping and, and listening to it uh, it's going and, and you, you're, you're saying well I'm asleep I'm not even well it's going into your, the depths of your heart and it's blessing you it's good time that's good time you know what I do a lot of, if I wake up in the middle of the night how many of you ever wake up in the middle of the night worrying about something or stressed out about something? Come on, be honest. How many of you had that happen? <laughs> well, for those that haven't had that happen, you are very blessed, I'll say that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I've had it happen. And you know one of the best things to do? Just start, start memorizing Scripture. I like to memorize Scripture and just not only read through the Bible, but camp out in a verse here and there. and Just get it memorized and uh, maybe a whole psalm or and I love the 91st psalm but get those get some of those verses memorized in your soulish area and then if the enemy is bothering you you don't even have to get up and find your Bible just start quoting scripture I like to just lay there and just start quoting scripture usually if I wake up in the middle of the night concerned about something if I start on the 91st psalm I, I hardly ever get, get to with long life where you satisfy me and show me your salvation you know the last verse I hardly ever get to that verse I fall back asleep with the peace of God you know before I get to the end but then if I wake up again I remember where usually I remember where I left off and I'll pick it up there and so if I wake up a couple of times I'll get to the end of it usually 
But you know, it's just so good to have that scripture there to where you don't, because there are times where you don't want to have to get up and find the Bible. Let, let it become a part of you, you know. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then let's, uh, hallelujah. I preach myself happy. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so your faith is being built up. Even when you're, even if you're playing it uh, on a DVD, on a TV set while you're on a treadmill, I'm a firm believer that your faith is being built up. And even if your attention is a, distracted to something else or your mind wanders, I believe it's still going into your spirit and your faith is being built up. We need to store up the Word of God in our hearts for when we need it. Keep, keep storing it up. Just like when, you know, farmers, you know, they take stuff and they can it and preserve it, you know. Well, a, a psalm says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's uh, in that long psalm. Is that what's the number? Is that 119? The long psalm, that real long one? Anyway, I believe it's verse uh, 6, 7, or 8. Hallelujah. I'm in the general vicinity anyway. <laughs> but we need to hide that word in our heart for when we need it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, how many of you are happy tonight? Yes. Let me give you a few more verses. Just a few more verses. I'm just going to read them because they're so good. Proverbs 4, beginning in verse 20. My son, give attention to my word. Words incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those to find who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. That's that deepest part of that lake. <laughs> Amen. And so I just thought I'd share that with you, and uh, let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of God that does not return void. Every time we hear the Word of God, it's not going to return void. It has a purpose. Thank you, Lord, for the, the words of the Bible. They are spirit and they are life. They're different than the words on the pages of any other book in the world. These, these words are spirit and they are life. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I'd just like to ask with everyone with their uh, heads bowed, eyes closed, in an attitude of prayer and with a reverence for God, not only those here but those watching online, to ask yourself this question, have I truly given my heart to Jesus? You know, it all begins with the new birth, that, that surrender to Jesus, and that's, that's when it all begins. And sometimes people, they get caught up in religion and so forth, and they think they have to be good enough. None of us can be good enough. We come to God the Father on the basis of the merits of His Son, Jesus, on His death, burial, and resurrection. We can't come on our own merits, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We come on the merits of Christ and His wonderful redemptive work that He did for us on the cross at Calvary. And God the Father's wonderful acceptance of that work when He raised Him from the dead. And so it's all about choice. God's not limited by our weaknesses. He's not limited by our sins. He took care of that. He's limited by our decisions and by our choices. And it, it all begins by choosing Jesus and just decide, I'm going to give my heart to Jesus. I'm going to make a forever decision to surrender my heart to Jesus. When we do that, the Bible tells us that we're born again. We receive a brand new beginning. And uh, the Bible says, for if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He gives you a new beginning, brand new life. Hallelujah. He, he, uh, uh, you're born again. He cleans up that lake. <laughs> Amen. And, and hallelujah. But if that's what you want, just lift your hand up high. You say, I want to give my heart to Jesus tonight. Whether you're here or watching online, I want to give my heart to Jesus. Praise the Lord. God sees your hand wherever you are. Let's stand to our feet. Let's say this prayer to encourage those within the hearing of our voices. 
that are giving their hearts to Jesus tonight. We know we've had many people surrender to Jesus online, uh, watching online, and this, this service is being streamed all over the world. Let's say this. We invite the Internet congregation to say this with us. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent and I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Jesus, I give you my heart. I accept you now and forever as my personal Lord and Savior. Take charge of my life. Give me a new beginning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you know, let's just, while we're standing, let's just lift our hands and worship Him and ask Him to fill us to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for filling us to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. If anyone has a word from the Holy Spirit, just feel free to give it. Just right where you are, just if you have a word from the Holy Spirit. We don't want to close till we're sure the Holy Spirit's done what He wants to do. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> you know, I, I, while we were here, and I, that, we started, well, I think the third verse we went to was the verse in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. And it said, uh, sanctify your, your whole spirit, soul, and body that you may be found blameless. And that word blameless just come, came up in my spirit. And listen, when, when, you, when you take your life to, to Christ and surrender to Him, and if you make a mistake after that and, and you, 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 the Lord shows it to you and you, you tell Him you're sorry, we, we don't have to go around with that guilt. You're, you're blameless because, why? Because Jesus already paid the price for your forgiveness. You're blameless because of the blood of Jesus. You're sanctified blameless. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to leave here tonight with that understood in our hearts that we've been sanctified, spirit, soul, and body, but we've been sanctified uh, and found blameless. Why? Because Jesus, He already took the judgment and punishment for our sins on the cross at Calvary. There's no reason anyone should leave here feeling a blame on themselves. God's given you a new beginning. Your sins have been wiped away uh, by the blood of Jesus and, and removed as far as the east is from the west. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They've been cast into the sea of forgetfulness. God's forgotten them. So should you. Amen. Hallelujah. You've been sanctified blameless. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else have a word from the Holy Spirit? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, God is good. Amen. All the time, somebody said. Well, God bless each and every one of you. And be sure and Visit and, and tell, be sure and tell Pauline how glad we are that she, uh, she's back with us. And Kay, is, she's been many times here, but it's, it's been a while. And we're so glad she's back visiting with us. Tonight. She attends a church, uh, uh, is a member of a church, uh, Korean. Uh, huh? Victory, okay. But is, is it a church that's a Korean church? Oh, okay. I thought, I thought it was for some reason. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I'm thinking of somebody else. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I'm thinking of somebody else. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anyway, we're glad you're back with us tonight. Amen. And uh, Robert's been coming many times now. If y'all haven't met Robert, uh, be sure and say hello to him. He's been coming many, many times. He's a friend of the Smiths, and they invited him here. And I'm so glad that Robert's been coming. And, the Browns have started coming, and uh, we're just, uh, and the Andrews, so glad y'all are back tonight. God bless all of the uh, newer people here, and 
We just hope you feel at home and feel welcome. And God bless the internet congregation. We love you. And if you don't have a home church, if you live in this area, uh, you can find out service times and connect up with us through glorychurch.com. And come on out here and let us meet you. I believe you'd love it here. God bless all of you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Let's give Jesus a hand clap.